Okay. Okay. We, we are live on YouTube. We're uh, starting, everybody. Um, calling the meeting of the Shellfish Waterways Committee uh, to order at 5.32. I guess everybody knows that um, this is a virtual meeting. It's being recorded um, by Channel 18. It's being broadcast over YouTube. It's my understanding it'll be available later for people to um, see it, those who couldn't come. We have uh, members John Quigley, Peter Perzgaki, Doug, uh, Billy Amaru, and Associate Suzanne Phillips and Doug Eggmans. Um, I did hear from Alexis Matheson that she cannot come. She has another committee meeting. We also heard from Mark Matheson that he can't come because he's involved in um, committee, uh, you know, union uh, staff negotiations. So hopefully we'll get uh, another person. Before we start with the business, I want to tell people, in case some people don't know, that one of our members, Jerry Burge, um, had a fall and was seriously injured. Um, a few days ago, Nate spoke with his son, and apparently he was taken to an ICU in a Boston hospital. He's got a number of broken uh, ribs and some internal damage from it, and it's going to be a long uh, road to recovery. Um, I'm sure people in the committee will join me, and, and I don't mean this in a trite way, but in saying that he is in our thoughts and prayers, and we hope he has a successful recovery and can join us at some time. All right, let's go to the minutes of the last meeting. Um, I did send them out when I sent out, you know, the, the agenda and some of the reading materials. Do we have a motion to uh, accept the minutes? Motion. Who did that? Peter. Peter. Um, will anybody second that, please? I'll second it, Phil. Thanks, John. I want to apologize to Bill who did the minutes. He was elected uh, clerk at our last meeting. He sent them to me after the meeting and I didn't really look at them until today. I apologize because I would like to clarify something. On page two, um, where it's giving the report of the 141 Port, Port Inimicate Task Force meeting, I'm the representative from the committee to that. Actually, the the vote was four to one to remove the building. Um, the options are still, it, it could be used for another purpose. Uh, the uh, Al McLennan of the Housing Trust was trying to see if that group was interested in maybe using it for um, affordable housing there or move it. A section, second option would be to ask some other party or entity to remove it and pay for the moving. And the third option would be demolish it. And I know in the Chronicle, it said something about demolition to step closer so I can see how it's understood. Um, they're also not gonna make a parking lot out of it. There will be, uh, there, are, there are proposals for four or five parking spaces, which is about the same as what's there now, but because it's conservation land, they can't just turn it into a parking lot. Um, although as an aside, I liked Bill's little editorial comment. But I would suggest we um, change it to say, the chairman reported the house or building, whatever you wanna say, at the 141 Port Nimicut Road property upon recommendation by a committee to oversee its use will be removed and the land it sits on used for passive recreation purposes. Cause that is the, um, standard in the in the uh, act under which the town voted for it. Phil? The, the Bill Amaru? Yeah, could I ask that along with remove, you insert and not destroyed? 
so that that house has the potential to become used for housing somewhere down the road? Um, your report, I was reporting on what the committee voted and they did not vote to not have it destroyed. So I don't think we can do that. I certainly wish that would happen, but it's just a report of what the task force did. Okay. Do we need a motion to change that or would you accept that bill? Can, we can have that as a discussion point. We're talking about the minutes right now, so we can't change. You're right about that. Can't change the minutes. But we could recommend that the building not be destroyed and, and uh, be, become available down the road for uh, housing. Um, we are talking just about the minutes. I certainly, I was the one that voted no, and I've been arguing that point um, at the task force and will continue to do so. Um, not been a winning argument so far, but it is possible to correct or change the minutes, and that's what we're addressing right now. I'm, I'm suggesting a correction. I don't think it's necessary to make it as a motion, but I will. Usually, what we've done in the past is just, you know, made the correction and it's been accepted. But I'll make a motion and ask for somebody to second it then. No one. Your motion is to is to amend the minutes. Yes. To have the sentence read: The chairman reported the house at 141 Porter Nimicut Road property, upon recommendation by a committee to oversee its use, will be removed and the land it sits on used for passive recreation purposes. That is what the 141 Porter Nimicut Task Force did vote on. That's why I'm saying it's a correction. No. You can do Q and A, and you can raise your hand. You push the bottom of the screen, and you can raise your hand. And uh, we can we can hear you, Kristen, and his his box also lit up, so I could call on him. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, hey, Phil. How you doing? I wasn't sure if you could hear me or not. Oh, good. Yeah. Do you go see ahead. It? No, I'm just saying hello. I'm here. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do the minutes later on. Okay. Let's get back to the minutes of November that we're reviewing. Um, I'm not sure why we're having so much trouble. Hey. Dealing with this. Yeah. Would somebody Su second the motion for the correction? S Suzanne, you're asking to just change the that what it says to either destroy or remove, like, so a third party could remove it, the building? I'm trying to correct a misinterpretation right. Okay. that the, it was reported that the task force said it would be destroyed and the land used for purpose not yet decided. And that's, not all right. all right, I second you. 100% accurate. Okay, thank you, Peter. Just to repeat, this is just a report of what the task force did. It's not related to what we as a committee voted for and recommended and wanted. Um, that's why I was saying to Bill, let's not change it. Nate? Phil, could you just ask the committee members if they're not participating at the moment to mute themselves until they're ready to engage? Just so that we don't have to up Okay, I think you just did. Um, what he's yeah. talking about is we're hearing some little bit of feedback and I don't know, sneezing and stuff like that. I know this is new for all of us, it's new for me too, but when you're not talking, Put yourself on mute and hopefully I will see that you want to talk and, and be able to call on you. Thank you. Do people have any questions about what I'm trying to um, correct in the minutes? Are we ready to have a vote to accept the minutes then? With the correction? So 
So moved. Okay. All those in favor, please. Aye. Aye. Um, I got to call your names. Uh, John Quigley. Yes. Peter Pisaki. Yes. Aye. Craig Pasikian. Aye. Bill Amaro. Aye. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Next order business is re-election of the officers. And I know we elected officers at the last month, but what happened was I got a call from John Kelly, the town administrator, um, who informed me that because I came back on the committee as an associate member and not a regular member, I can't be the chairperson. And I told him that we didn't know that. Um, I certainly wouldn't have accepted the appointment if I'd known. I thought that um, alternates can, associate members, I mean, can, can just not vote unless there's a shortage of members and they're asked to step in. So we need to have another election of officers. What I did after that was I contacted Dave Slack, who, is, who was the vice chair, and Bill Amaru had just been elected clerk and um, talked it over with them. And I would like, and maybe this is one of my last acts as chairperson to, um, suggest a slate of officers that would go from now until June when we would presumably have another election. And that, um, so I'm gonna make a motion that we um, vote in uh, Bill Amaru as chairperson, David Slack as vice chair and Craig Kosikian as the clerk. That's my motion, is anybody willing to uh, second that motion. Second. Was that you, Peter? Yeah. Thank you. Any discussion? You guys good with that? Absolutely. I uh, I asked them. <clears throat> they they allowed their arms to be twisted. And I said, I'm in the Happy to help out in any way that I could in terms of passing on information and like that. I'm not going to be a great advisor on how to do these minutes that, I mean, these meetings, somebody else have to learn that on their own. Anyway, are we have, have any more discussion? All right, let's take a vote on the slate. Um, all those in favor, uh, John Quigley. Aye. Peter? Aye. Craig? Aye. Bill? Oh, uh, I'll abstain. And Dave Slack? He was on, but he's he's off now. Phil, Phil, I just uh, sent Dave a link to sign in. He was having trouble uh, getting okay. patched in. He'll be he'll be momentarily patched back in. because we only have three votes and we need four. Bill, are you uh, willing to accept the appointment, however? Yes, I am willing to accept the appointment. I, I just felt since I was being nominated as chairman, I would simply avoid the possibility of uh, appearing to be overly zealous about my appointment. But <laughs> if you need my vote, yes, obviously I'll vote for myself. Thank you. Why don't we do that just so we can move on? All right, I, I, I rescind my uh, my abstention and I vote positive. So moving right along, the next item is um, we need an alternate to the Dredge Advisory Committee. Uh, Bill Amaru is actually our regular appointee and John Quigley was the alternate and um, John indicated that he would like to no longer serve in that position. So we need um, to have someone else. I don't know how often um, you actually have to uh, speak up at meetings, but it, it wouldn't, the responsibility would involve at least keeping in touch and, and um, 
you know, viewing the meetings and keeping up with what's going on. Is anybody interested in being our alternate to the Dredge Advisory Committee? I'll, I'll step anybody up. want to make any nominations? Go ahead, Peter. Step up. Could you say that again? I couldn't hear you. I said, I'll step up and, and fill the position. Beautiful. So we have a nomination for Peter to start here. I hear some uh, UFO ringing from somebody. Um, any discussion on that? We don't usually have, ask somebody to unmute. Nate? Can I just ask the vice chair? I, I don't know what's happening here. I, I'm on my phone now because my laptop doesn't seem to be showing me. You couldn't hear me. So now I'm using my phone and I can't see you folks. But in any event, uh, I vote aye on the uh, officers. Can we hear you perfectly, Dave? Thank you, Dave. Okay, I got a weirdo screen, but I'm glad to glad to know that. Do you see me? No, you have to have a camera on to see you. Yeah, well, in any event, please to continue. You. Now we see please. you. Okay, please to continue. Okay, we, we are trying to have an alternate to the Dredge Advisory Committee. And Peter just stepped up. In the past, we would have kind of done this by consensus, but I'm thinking let's take a vote. John? Is that okay with you? Yes. Greg? You're asking me? Yes. Fine, yes, that's great. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Dave Schlack? Aye. Bill? Aye. Beautiful. I'd like to suggest that we switch number five and number six because I'm thinking you guys must be sick of hearing me talk at this point. And I was going to give an update on MSI. And I'd like to suggest let's let Nate fill us in on Harbor Master shellfish issues, and then I'll give the, the, the MSI update um, because Mark isn't here for a, for a select board uh, liaison update anyway. Is that okay with you, Nate? Absolutely. Right. Phil, if, I'm, if I can interrupt one second. You just did. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. Um, <clears throat> I'm not recording minutes right now because I'm holding my, my screen. So I'm going to come back later on and check the video to get minutes. Is that easy, easily done, you think? What we used to do in the past, and I'm sorry I didn't even clarify this, was basically finish out with the people that were the officers for the meeting and then have the new people take over next time. So under that, Bill would still do some minutes for this particular meeting. And then next month, Bill would take over and you would do those minutes. And that's okay. just what I'm doing, Phil. I, I am keeping minutes. Okay, so, so Craig, you don't Craig, have to worry thank about you. it. You're off the hook, Craig, okay? Until oh, next, <laughs> next year. Hooks, hooks up my head. Okay, let's all give our attention to Nate and hear about what's been going on. Thanks, Phil. His, his realm. Uh, I've been working with some software consultants and looking for the proper way to bring mooring and waitlist renewals online for folks to be able to go directly to the town of Orleans website and, and to renew their moorings and waitlists or to main, maintain their, their, look, you know, their spot on waitlists. It'll be the first phase of this. Uh, we're gonna do it in baby steps just to make sure we get it right. I'll still maintain the similar database that I have. We'll still provide mail-in renewals to everybody. Um, but, we're, you know, we're not going to do dockage payments and uh, first time applicants for moorings or wait lists initially, but uh, we hope to have that up and running for the 2021 season. We have a limited amount of time 
to finish this off because we will be sending more mooring and wait lists and dockage bills out the first of the year. So that's going to be uh, some exciting technology for making it a lot easier for people to renew uh, wait lists and renew and moorings. Uh, we had Conservation Commission this morning. We finalized the permitting for Hubler Road, which is the extension from the upper motel parking lot down to Nosset Beach parking lot. It's going to be a two-way roadway with a sidewalk. Uh, it's the first piece to connecting the dots for us to retreat to the upland and finalize uh, through the Coastal Resiliency Grant to put a, a long-term parking lot up at the motel. Uh, moving forward on that. We have pulled the Rock Harbor docks for the season, uh, as well as the, the town docks. And uh, all of the navigational aids throughout town have been pulled from the water. Uh, I met with the Herring Warden, uh, Scott Johnson, and the Herring Technical Coordinator, Judy Scanlon, yesterday at the Herring Run to discuss uh, the 2021 season at, at, at the Pilgrim Lake Herring Run. Uh, we will be asking Brad Chase to attend a meeting in the future. He works for the Division of Meat Fisheries and he's the herring expert. Uh, he will be bringing forward options for us uh, next season to see if we should continue with the electronic counter or to look at other technologies uh, and, and to have everybody really be part of the conversation about what's the right formula for that herring run. I have been interviewing uh, applicants for the beach director position that was approved at town meeting. It's a full-time position to manage the beaches uh, in Orleans. Uh, it will also be assistant to me year round. Uh, we had six applicants, three interviews, and uh, we do have a recommendation for that position that we will be bringing forward to the town administrator. Uh, working with Chief Scott McDonald, Looking at, uh, under the guidance of the Board of Selectmen, we're looking at the highest priority locations in town for implementing uh, uh, a town-wide parking program, which would essentially require a parking permit to park at town landings as well as the beaches. Obviously, the beaches historically have required a permit to park, but we're going to be looking at some of these problem areas that are under high demand during uh, the peak season. And... Um, identifying those and bringing recommendations to the selectmen on where we think permits should be required to park. That should be happening probably within the next month that'll, and, and hopefully we'll be implementing uh, the initial phases of that program for this upcoming season. Uh, going back out for a new contract for the food trucks this year, putting together an RFP, seeing if we can attract uh, additional food trucks down in Nauset Beach, sending out the grant reports to the aquaculture grants right now, gather the information. Um, spoke with Mark Matheson, I'm gonna combine this report since uh, Selectman Matheson was not able to attend the meeting tonight. Um, we were talking about prioritizing town landings and hopefully working with the committee to do an assessment townwide of our landings so that we can prioritize maintenance needs at the landings and bring forward recommendations to the Board of Selectmen in terms of uh, you know, which, which locations are at highest priority right now and what the needs are. Um, right now, uh, the, and uh, you guys are probably well aware that the Mill Pond Landing was up for um, improvements to the roadway to stabilize the erosion. Uh, it was it was permitted through Conservation Commission, and it failed to, at vote at town meeting. Uh, they did put it back to poll through a vote, and 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 it is going to be going back to a vote in the spring. It would be helpful if we educated the Shellfish Waterways Committee on how we got to this point with Mill Pond, Mill Pond Landing in terms of, you know, what our options were and what our limitations were. I know that some have uh, felt that that was a pretty high price tag for, you know, what needed to be done down there. 
So I would ask moving forward, if we could put on a future agenda, and I will bring this up at the end of the meeting, that uh, I gather information, bring that information to the committee so that we have confidence uh, moving forward and, and, and we can make a recommendation to the selectmen and possibly a letter of support for that project. Um, I think that's it. Thanks, Nate. Does anybody have any questions or want to discuss any of the issues that he uh, brought up? There's a lot. Are you raising your hand, Craig? No. I think it's a low energy night. Maybe it's a low energy time because people are hungry. Um, any other questions you want to ask Nate or something? Maybe he forgot something. No, I, I personally think it was a good report, complete. Left very little in doubt. All right, Nate, you're off the hook. Let me just uh, briefly update people on the MSI. I'm not going to go over all that we talked about in the last two or three years with with the Mass Shellfish Initiative. Um, glad to talk to people outside the meeting or refer you to the Massachusetts Shellfish Initiative. They have their own website and have all the documents. Um, I will say that, I don't remember when it was, might have been a year and a half ago, the committee discussed some of this and was not able to come to a consensus on in terms of any recommendations or anything like that, which is fine. But here's what's happened recently. Nothing happened for months. And then on December 4th, the task force, and that's the group that has um, some political people, including Sarah Peake, our representative, whole bunch of agency heads, all them, that the task force, they had a meeting. Um, they hadn't met for a year and a half and they decided to move ahead. They set up a strategic planning working group to move ahead and try to wrap up the plan that they've, you know, that we've been kicking around for the last few years. One reason they want to wrap it up is, is they the steering committee was able to score another short-term grant, which runs out in a few months, and they've got that deadline. I found out Monday morning that the first meeting of the uh, strategic planning committee was Monday morning. So it, I guess it didn't even show up on the, on the state website until Friday. So if, if that had not been the case, I would have sent out to people a list of who's on it, the agenda, some of the materials, did not do that and willing to do that um, after this meeting just because people have it. They have set up some meetings. Um, they've got a pretty aggressive agenda. And the reason this is important for us is because they're, the end result is going to be a plan for development and management of shellfish in the state of Mass the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And some of the items could very well affect things that we've been doing on the town level. And this is going to be like our last chance to have some input and have some say in what is going to be coming down the pike. Some of it is, and, and this is a personal opinion that, that's shared by a couple of other people that watch this meeting. Because it involves a whole lot of state agency people and heads of statewide groups like the Mass Aquaculture Association. It, to, to those of us out in the flats, it feels kind of top down. 
And I will say that when you read through some of the documents, you can tell that these people all have graduate degrees and there's a lot of 50 cent words and it um, can be a little difficult trying to figure out what they're talking about because they're used to their jargon. And so they talk about an iterative process. It's like, what? You know, let, let's use some plain English here. I, I think it's hard for people who are out in the field and it's hard for some of us that even some of us that have some of the education to even understand what's going on, but it's important that we do try to have our say. Um, once again, a number of people were, were giving feedback. The December 4th meeting was at low tide for those of us on the Cape, and a lot of people squawked about that. They are gonna pay some attention to that. We keep telling them, you're not being transparent, you're having feedback, you know, public can say something at the end of the meeting, but it's in meetings like this, which a lot of people can't relate to. And I'll tell you that even the chairperson of the committee meeting, who's Rob O'Leary, who used to be our state senator and was responsible for the ocean uh, planning uh, statute in Massachusetts years ago and all that, he had trouble trying to figure out when to unmute himself and mute himself and call on people and all that. So it's not just people like us that aren't used to it. It's people that are sitting in front of computers all the time. So that's basically what I wanted to update people about. I'm sorry I don't have all the information in front of you and it would be impossible to talk about without it. Um, the working group is going to meet the week of January 11th though, and they have this grid with um, the goal and the objectives and the specific tasks. And they're asking all the members of the group and the agency heads and all that to fill that in according to their own agencies. And then they're gonna to come together and it's kind of figuring it out as they go, figure out what's gonna be the next step and working out a plan. Um, but I would urge people in the meantime, if you have extra time, before it gets busy, before this is done at the end of March, go to the Mass Shellfish Initiative website, look up some of the documents. One that I would recommend you read is, is um, the scoping committee report. The meat of it is only 28 pages. All these reports are like 200 pages because they have these unbelievable addendums. But just read the 28 pages and you'll get the, a gist of what they're talking about some of the goals and specifics make some sense, but some of them, it's hard to tell what they are. And of course, being state government people, they want to streamline things and coordinate things and personal opinion. Again, it might be easier for them to do some of that at their level and not take into account all the um, local things that we might want to do. I will say that contrary to some of the other discussions, there does seem to be a recognition that we need to have more research about some of the changing biological conditions. Um, we are, all you guys know this, but we're one of the hot spots in the world for ocean warming. We're number two in the world behind Arctic. We're up there for ocean acidification, which absolutely affects shellfish. Um, the state doesn't have a lot of its own research potential. So they're working with universities and non-government organizations and other people. But um, one of the things we might want to do is make sure that folks in the local communities have some say in what the research topics are instead of some grad student coming along and just picking something that's different that somebody else did. And you know, you get the idea. Um, anyway, I, I'm going to not go on and on. I'm going to ask people to try to look at um, some of the documents. I'll send out some of the basics about the strategic planning committee because they are, after months of having nothing happen, starting to move ahead. And just as an aside, I'll mention the Cutler Bill, H746, um, which basically purports to change how we transfer aquaculture grants. Um, you probably know that different coastal towns do it different ways. Um, there, there are some 
overall state guidelines, but you don't have to do it. There are certain things you have to do, but other things you don't have to do. Um, this was a very controversial issue. Dan McKiernan, who is now the director of DMF, not acting anymore, but the director, he stated at the task force meeting that it would be separate from the MSI, but however, it was in yesterday in, in some of the discussion that, and, and basically how it was discussed was, oh, gee, this is controversial. And I know this was something that people felt pretty strongly about down here, and it's something we want to keep an eye on if anything's happening. So unless somebody has a question that I can't answer, um, I'll just, uh, yes, Dave. Myself. You need to unmute yourself because I can't hear you. Uh, I did listen to it. It was real hard to follow because they did stick to their government lingo and it seemed to be talking mostly about procedural matters and not the things that us fishermen care about. But uh, one thing that came up was Josh from uh, you know Barnstable County recommended that there be more time for the public to respond. And at one point that idea was kind of poo-pooed, but I think by the end of it, they agreed. And one person said, I don't know who, if it was Dan or who it was, but said something to the effect that, well, they've got 10 days or two weeks or whatever it is, and they should be able to get their group together and do it. And you know, when you're herding cats, it's not that easy. So I'm glad that Josh said that. Thanks, Dave. You're right. And there were actually actually several people that brought up that issue. And one of the reasons I think we need to try to stay on top of this is they're going to have a meeting and put something out there and then go, oh, well, there's a time for the public to comment. And if we're not really following along and, and trying to understand what's going on, we won't even know what to comment on, if you know what I'm saying. Right. So <clears throat> sent out though um, to everybody notifying them of that MSI meeting. I got one. But I know that Ginny Parker complained that she didn't get there, there was some there was some confusion and um, some people are on the MSI list. Anybody can sign up and be on it. Some of us were actually on committees, like I was on the assessment committee, it's no longer meeting, but um, it's also the DMF list. But they also, this particular meeting was posted late, it was posted Friday for a Monday meeting. So it caught a lot of people by surprise. A lot of people made a stink out of that. I don't think that'll happen again. Yeah. Because we're staying on it. The next meeting of this group will be the week of January 11th. We already know that. So we'll, we'll keep apprised. Bill, so, did you want to say something? Looks yeah, like yeah, I, I did. I, <clears throat> um, being on the commission now, the commission is working with the division on overseeing the actions of, of the, uh, of the um, process here and um, not contributing directly to it, but are aware of what's going on. And I can tell you from my short time of being involved in the commission that uh, uh, there is some strength to the idea that the Division of Marine Fisheries wants to move forward quickly with this. And they intend to have a, a, a process in, in place by spring. <clears throat> so if anybody has any concerns or ideas uh, or and anything they want to bring forward to the division through the commission, please speak to me about it and I will do that. I already recommended that they take that long, extremely long and complex document and reword it and uh, condense it down to something that's understandable by the by the uh, the layman by the common fisherman and they referred to the introduction that you just spoke to the 28 page summary or introduction I don't know how you describe it uh, as already accomplishing that which I didn't agree with but I don't think we'll see anything in addition to that uh, but <clears throat> they know that it's controversial and they're sensitive to that exactly how they're going to handle some of the dissension, I'm not 100% sure. But if you, again, if I start out by ending and what I said initially, if you have any particular concerns or interests, please speak to me. Uh, we're meeting again in, in uh, mid-January. 
Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And um, I'm glad to see somebody has some of the same impression that I do. One of the things I would like to say is because we're already at the point where they're putting um, goals and objectives and specific tasks in a grid format, um, they're already moving in that direction. And, and I think for us to really be heard, we have to try to fit our comments into some of that grid. Um, I've had the same discussion at several meetings with people about, you know, you're using 50 cent words and people outside your field don't know what they are. And even the executive summary, and, and I was one of the people at, at one of the meetings last year that was saying, you know, let's um, not be handing out a 200 page document. Let's have a shorter version that people can kind of look at it starts off with that uh, phrase about iterative process right in the first sentence. I kid you not in, in, the, in the scoping report. So um, I feel like that part isn't heard. And some of us who can talk that language and also talk with folks need to help be the conduit and get them to hear what, what are the real concerns for people. I'm afraid that people aren't going to deal with it because it's just so complicated and, and, you know, boring and everything else. And, and if we don't speak up and, and just say it the way we need to say it, I'm not saying fit into their language and everything, because I, I don't agree with that. I think we should be talking in plain English, but we need to raise the issues and we need to hold on to as much local control as we can. That's all. Anyway. We'll send some stuff out for people's reading pleasure. Um, does anybody have any announcements? Anybody from the committee? And then I'll see if anybody is watching and wants to add to it. Uh, Phil? Yes. I can let the committee know that uh, Jerry Burge is back home. He has been released from the intensive care unit up in Boston and he's back home. He isn't moving around much, but he is home. Thank you, that's good to hear. Um, Does anybody besides a committee member watching this want to make an announcement or make any statement? Sarah, is there anybody out there? There's uh, Kristen and Walter North that are out there, but they didn't raise their hand, so I'm not sure if they want to talk. Okay. Could I ask Walter North a question? Why not? Walter, are you on? I am. Walter, can you give us a quick rundown uh, as to how the summer's uh, water sampling process went forward this past year, assuming it even happened? I'm not sure it did. It did happen. And Nate probably has more, may, may have more precise information than I do. My understanding is that it, it was successfully uh, carried out, but I don't know what the results are but they were able to get out on the water and do the sampling. They were, I'm not sure if they got to all of the uh, locations, if they got total coverage, but I think they got to most of them. Good. Maybe and we can get a report down the line as to how it, how it looks for this year. Yeah, and there was a transition. Carolyn uh, Kennedy is no longer in charge of it. Yeah. Do you know who the new director will be? I'm not sure. Um, maybe, Phil, do you know? I don't know, but I would imagine that uh, Judy Scanlon is well qualified, and I hope she's the one. She's definitely involved, but I well, she she's, she helped start all this and and got the freshwater pond testing going and worked side by side with Carolyn for all these years. Bill, if I, since you've asked me a question, can I ask you a question? Go right ahead. Are you in the MSI process? Are you staying in touch with Sarah and Julian? 
Not directly, no. Only through the meetings that we have. I haven't actually re reached out to them. This process is rather, I hate to say it, it's a bit convoluted and I'm kind of keeping my distance. I, I have a lot of other irons in the fire already and um, all I'm going to do is, is listen to what they have to say and if I hear anything of particular uh, interest to our area, uh, I share the same philosophy that uh, our chairman does. And uh, I think they know that. And that's one of the concerns that they do have. But to answer your question briefly, no, I have not. Was Sarah in that meeting on Monday, Suzanne? No, that was the working group. She's on the task force. And I can tell you that a number of us, um, myself being one of them, are in contact with her and expressing Great, thank the concerns you. of our folks. Um, I'd like to say hello to Alexis, who came rushing over from her other meeting. Hi, Alexis. Um, hey, guys. Sometimes in the past, we've done a list of items for future agendas. I didn't put that on the agenda for tonight. But one of the things that I'm going to be doing um, as part of assisting uh, the new you know, chairperson and officers and everybody is writing out detailed instructions about how to schedule the meeting, what to do with the minutes, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I will include from my notes list of what we, we have said in the last couple of months we would like to talk about in, in the future. Um, I don't know if everybody in the committee knows, but for the last number of, of months, um, actually back when I was secretary, we started conferring informally as a, an executive committee before the meeting and, and Nate was involved with this. Um, and, and one of the reasons, and usually we did this just, you know, an email here and there, but one of the reasons was that Nate is on top of all the issues and sometimes something would come up he would know about that committee members didn't know about from three weeks ago at our last meeting. So since I've been chair, I've been drafting the agenda, sending it around to whoever else was an officer and Nate and getting a little feedback and also discussing what items we need to bring forward and like that. So I am hoping people will continue to work that way. It's, it, it's um, good to have two or three eyes on how the company, I'm tired, how the committee is functioning and not have it just rely on one person and his or her memory <laughs> um, as, as to what gets on there. So I'm gonna include some of these items um, for the executive committee for w when they set up the next meeting. So I don't know if anybody else has, has anything else they wanna uh, say that's on the agenda. And if not, entertain a motion to adjourn. Does anybody want to say anything about how it was meeting at, at this time? We burned through the meeting in one hour. Maybe that's because people can, are hungry. I don't know. Can I say something, Phil? Again, I, I'm, I'm yes. going to ask your indulgence. I, I want to compl compliment you for the great work you did. No, you can't, you can't say I, I can't? No. For the great work you did as chairman, and I'm going to be relying on you heavily to get my uh, feet on the ground. And I intend to follow in your rather large footsteps for a, for a petite little gal like you are. You've got some large shoes to fill and I'll do the best I can to do that. Thank you, Bill. No, I'm not going anywhere and I'm, I'm willing to help out uh, whenever, but you know what? I'm looking forward to just being a member and just raising my hand and shooting my mouth off and not having to keep track of who needs to talk and who, seconded what motion and all this and that you guys can take care of it and i'll do what i can to make sure you can david's going to be my technical assistant he'll take care he, of all he'll that. be very helpful i'm sure he will <laughs> and we already know that craig keeps good minutes because remember the days we had a roving uh, you know rotating secretary every month all right motion to adjourn anybody i'll make the motion second i'll second it I don't know who said that. I saw Dave wave his hand. All right, Craig, I'll let you do it. 
What? Bill. Oh. Yes. John Quigley. Yes. Unmute yourself. Say aye. <laughs> yes. Uh, Peter. Aye. Craig. Yes. David. Aye. Alexis. Aye. 